Okay, we have two limits on a spot. They look really similar. Both of them, x approaching 5. However, for this one, we have x squared minus 6x plus 5 over x minus 5. But for the second one, we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 and then over x minus 5. Don't worry, just do it with the fundamental way I showed you guys in class before. Well, always plug in this number into all the x and see what happens. When we do that for the first one, 5 squared minus 6 times 5 plus 5, we actually get 0. And then when we put in 5 right here, of course, we also get 0. This is a 0 over 0 situation. That means we have to do more work in order to figure out the answer. For this one, though, when we put in 5, well, 5 squared minus 5 times 5, that's 25 minus 25, so that will be 0, but we still have the 6. So we actually have a 6 on the top. And when we put in the 5 right here, we get 0. So that's the computation. This might be slightly strange at the moment, but we have to investigate more, right? So let's do this one first. It's slightly more natural for us to do because we can actually just do some nice factoring. So let's see the limit as x approaching 5. Factor the top, we get x minus 5 x minus 1, on the bottom we have x minus 5, yep. Yeah? And then of course, the x minus 5 can be cancelled yet, and then just put a 5 in here, so we have 5 minus 1 now, and of course that's the nice number, which is going to be our nice answer, 4, that's it. However, for this one, be super, super careful with this. Notice that when we have a non-zero number over 0, we are going to end up with either positive infinity or negative infinity. We have to check the sign, right? So again, this right here, whenever we have a non-zero number over zero, either we get positive infinity or negative infinity, but again, we have to check the sign. If it's positive or negative, etc., etc. And the way that we can do this one is, we will just do both, the left and also the right limit. So. Look at this one, the limit as x approaching 5, but let's go ahead and go from the left hand side. So 5 minus, this is like saying 4.999. Anyway, let's go ahead and put this down again. This is x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x minus 5. And when we do this, okay, putting 5 minus into all that, on the top we have 5 technically minus, doesn't really matter that much, you will see why. It's just the bottom, that's the part we have to matter. We have to worry. On the bottom here with 5 minus minus 5, right? Okay, here we go. This is 25 minus 25. 0 minus whatsoever doesn't matter because when you add a 6, it's always going to be positive, okay? However, the bottom, this is where you have to check the sign of the 0 plus or the 0 minus. This is like 4.999 and then minus 5 it's going to be a negative small number. So we will write this as 0 minus. On the top is positive, on the bottom is negative, therefore this limit gives us negative infinity, right? On the other hand, when we have the limit as x approaching 5 with a plus, this is like 5.001. And here we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x minus 5. Well, we know Go ahead and just put in 5 plus. Again, the top is just going to give us 6. So it doesn't really matter if you put a 5 or 5 plus. It's just the button that matter the most. So here we have this. Again, on the top, it's just going to give us 6, plus the 6. On the bottom, this is like 5.001 minus 5. It's 0, right? This is 0, but it's actually 0 plus. Again, the reason you put on plus minus is that you have to talk about the sign. Zero plus on the bottom, positive divided by positive, well, that will give us positive infinity. Well, well, look at, this is negative infinity for the left hand side, this is positive infinity for the right hand side, they unfortunately do not equal, therefore the answer to this is what? Does not exist, I'll just put this down, D and E for that, right? So. That's it. Be really careful. Sometimes you might be really just working with a tricky question. It's not because the question has a typo, so you cannot fact it, right? So that's it.